day 4642 in quarantine covid 19 is still a problem no just kidding oh still can't go to the barber my hair is still a mess yes that's why i wear hats and stuff and my hair looks fucked up in every clip today we have a special video not really that special but it's a really interesting topic and i saw this video on the very popular visual politic um channel so go give them follow them or subscribe to them if, if you're interested in, in watching more of these kind of videos and it is why china is investing in the balkans i was like what china investing in the balkans i mean yeah but russians as well but i why is it big enough to make a video about it so it's from last year 26th of march 2018 completely missed this video went off my radar i found it well i found it found me it was recommended to me so i really want to take a look on on this video and find out why china what has china to do with the balkans or what the goal is here peninsula is a region with 12 countries that have just one thing in common and that's that they all hate each other For no, that's not entirely true. They all hate each other. I mean, kind of do, but there's also a lot of things, other things that, that are in common. For decades, most of these countries were a big part of a federation called Yugoslavia, which had a socialist system very similar to that of the Soviet Union. What? Very similar to that of the Soviet Union? No, very different to the Soviet Union. That's not correct. Maybe on in theory or on paper, but uh, yeah, like parts of it, but it was in many ways very different from the from the strict communism from the Soviet Union. So I don't agree with this one. It's debatable. After the fall of communism, the Yugoslavian estate broke apart and all the regions separated from each other in the most violent way possible. If you're about my age or not all of them broke away in the most violent way possible. Slovenia broke away like in, in peace. Macedonia did as well. Montenegro did as well. Slightly older, you might remember the terrible Balkan Wars, a showcase of the worst part of the human condition. And all of this happens just a few kilometers away from Italy and from Greece. So while the rest of Europe enjoyed a comfortable and peaceful existence, this region's inhabitants were killing each other. Since then, the Balkans have been one of Europe's poorest regions. Some people call it the Bermuda Triangle of Economics because when someone invests here, their money mysteriously disappears. Traveling to a country like Albania is a bit like traveling 50 years in the past. Other countries like Serbia... Yeah, but traveling 50 years, maybe even more, man. Once you have a war for like five years and everything is on hold for five years, no economic development, no research, no nothing. And just everything's being bombed so many years back, to be honest. So, yeah, that's what a war does. The after effects of a war are probably even bigger than the effects of the war at the time that it's taking place are growing fairly fast lately, but they are still miles away from being able to join the European Union. And Greece, which is the best boy in the classroom, is bankrupt and has an unemployment rate. Greece is the best boy in the, ba in the classroom, but they're bankrupt. How? No, they're not the best boy in the... In the no. Okay. Of 21%. In other words, this doesn't look like a good country for doing business, right? Well, dear viewer, China thinks it is. China is pouring billions of pounds worth of investment into Greece and other Balkan countries to create a new Silk Road from the Mediterranean into the heart of the European Union. We are talking... Well, that's a very interesting topic. A new Silk Road. ...about almost $20 billion. This is the same cost as hosting the Olympic Games, and it's all in a region where nobody else seems to invest a penny. China has bought a harbor and is now building brand new railroads that will connect the Balkans with Budapest in Hungary, and that might end up in Germany. But not only that, the Chinese government is paving the way for private investment. Can you imagine Chinese factories on the outskirts of Belgrade and AliExpress logistics center in the middle of Athens? Well, well to be honest, he says, like, imagine, I I don't think that would be weird at all. Like if the politicians cannot save the country itself and there's not, there's no jobs there and they can't make them, 
because they're unattracted well they're very it's a very un, un or this i don't know how you're gonna say that it's a very bad area for doing investments um or most people think it's a very bad idea for doing investments since i don't agree with that but um this would be like an opportunity i guess a good opportunity reality sooner than you might expect For a better understanding, if we look at it relative to their population, China is showing a bigger interest in Greece or Serbia than it is in Germany. So now the question is why? More interest in Greece or Serbia than in Germany. Yeah, because the prices are lower, I guess. It has way more potential for a lower cost. Why is China so interested in the Balkans? Isn't this a poor, corrupt and business unfriendly region? I mean, what is China trying to achieve here? Well, today we are going to answer all of these questions, but as usual, before we do, let's take a look back at the history. A country for sale. In the year 2010, Greece started their budget cuts. The whole country was bankrupt, and the European Union agreed to bail them out with money from its wealthiest members. But in exchange, the Greek government was supposed to control their spending. Since then, Greece has gone through all kinds of political and financial crises. Unemployment simply doesn't stop growing, it's now at more than 20% and poverty is on the rise too. For a better understanding, Greek public debt is almost twice that of their entire gross domestic product. Holy mother of God. Oops. Greeks. Holy D shit. And on top of all of this, Greece seems to be allergic to business. They have rampant corruption, red tape, and all kinds of laws that have created a country with almost no major companies. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> like, and, and earlier in the video you said the best boy in the classroom? What? Brussels demanded that the government of Alexis Tsipras make reforms and sell their state-owned companies. But there was a big problem here. Being in the situation that they were, nobody wanted to buy the Greek government's property. So they simply had to drop their prices to rock bottom. In other words, Greece was, and still is, in a desperate situation. And now guess who can smell desperation from miles and miles away? Yep, that would be China. China China's it. Costco acquires 51% stake in Greece's Piraeus port. With this deal, China was killing two birds with one stone. On the one hand, one of their companies was buying one of the main ports in the Mediterranean Sea. On the other, the government of Xi Jinping, with his commitment to investing three billion more dollars in the country, was buying a political ally inside the EU. And yes, 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 I know what you're now thinking. The Greek president, Alexis Tsipras, the European left rock star, the man who would never sell his principles to an evil rich guy no matter how much money was put on the table. Yeah, yeah, we mean that guy. <laughs> money talks, people. Money talks. Money does everything in this world. Except for making you immortal. But yeah, this is a great example. Greece blocks EU's criticism at UN of China's human rights record. Greece has vetoed a European Union condemnation of China's human rights record at the UN, infuriating diplomats and rights organizations, who said the move undermined the EU's position as a defender of human rights. Yep, so he definitely is being used as a puppet by the Chinese. But wait just a minute, because this is not only about politics here. Let's take a look at it from an economic perspective. Now a Chinese company controls one of the biggest ports in Europe. This means Chinese businesses will find it easier than ever to load their products into one of the wealthiest markets on the planet, Europe. But still, there's a little problem here. From the Piraeus port to Berlin, we have more than 2,300 kilometers of distance. And on the way, we have poor countries with poor roads and poor railways. But hold on just a second here, because China has already thought of this. Do you remember the One Belt, One Road project? This is a brand new Silk Road that Xi Jinping wants to create. This is a network of infrastructure that is meant to connect the entire world. And in Europe, this Silk Road will go through the Balkans. Damn. These Chinese ain't fucking around, are they? These guys have so much money, their economics are doing so well, they're basically just <laughs> like pimping the whole world.
Belgrade, Budapest railway construction starts. At the same time, Chinese consulting companies are working to renovate the railroads between Greece and Macedonia. The goal is to be able to have one shipment landing in Piraeus and crossing the whole Balkan Peninsula at 160 kilometers an hour. And all of this is cheaper to build here than in Italy. I mean, think about it. The Balkans have cheap land and cheap salaries, and their governments are welcoming this Chinese money with open arms. As we said at the beginning, the Balkans still feel a bit like the aftermath of the wars from the 90s. In a city like Belgrade, you can still see the ruins from the NATO bombings in 1999. A country like Montenegro doesn't even have a rip. That's also like almost the only damage Serbia took as a hit from NATO. So, yeah, don't put them in the victim role right there. Railroad that connects it with Bosnia or Croatia, despite sharing a border. Don't forget that, except for Greece and Croatia, none of these countries are EU members. This means that they hardly get any Brussels money to rebuild, so these Chinese loans are simply like dollars from heaven. Yeah, exactly. And even the, and we did get a lot of money from the EU, so that's not completely true. But the money disappears, like he said in the, in the, earlier in the video. It's just a bar Bermuda Triangle where corruption is like king. When we speak about this with European countries, they say, why China? Because they have the money, to be honest. Zorana Z. Mielovic, Serbian Mielovic. Minister of Transportation. But yeah. <laughs> what? Why make it more complicated than it is? This is just because of the money, of course. Hold on just a second here, because this is not the end of the story. What if China wants to go even further? Chinese factories in Europe? We'll know it. China started growing thanks to the foreign companies that set up in these special economic zones. But the truth is, the real appeal of China during the 90s was the lower wages. However, things they've now changed. Take a look at this chart. Yep, this was the case in the 90s as well. So it didn't really change a lot. The gap got bigger. That That's a big change, yeah. But the the wages in bosnia are even lower than these from belgrade average wages and in croatia i think they're a bit higher but you get the point like cheap cheap labor this is why one of the things and the reasons why i said i, I would invest in the balkans and have a company there because of the low wages the low taxes etc Today, the average salary in a city like Shanghai is almost the same as that in Greece and almost double that of the Serbian salary. This means for a Chinese company, Serbia is something close to what Shenzhen used to be for an American. There's also the fact that Serbian education is relatively good and... Not only Serbian, like the whole ex-Yugoslav region has really good education. And Slovenia as well. This is why uh, a lot of my friends who are studying in Slovenia, I'm, I'm really impressed on how their schools are developing and how much highly educated people they're pumping out. It's just ridiculous, especially in like uh, IT and BI and these kind of things. It's like it's like really impressive. And they're close to Germany. In summary, cheap labor, well-educated population, and close to one of the world's most appealing markets. This, dear viewer, is an unexplored paradise. Exactly. This is what I've been set, bleh, selling, telling in all my videos. It's it's a paradise that just hasn't been explored or is getting explored, but also exploited, which is a very, very, very fitting word. China's Hebei signs agreement to buy Serbian steel plant. Of course, Damn. this news is from 2016, and we still don't have that many examples, but there are enough cases to show a clear trend. Chinese companies want to start manufacturing things in Europe, and the Balkans are the perfect place to do that. Most specifically, they're looking at Serbia. This explains why this year Xi Jinping himself paid a visit to Belgrade, or why Huawei has already invested a fortune to improve telecommunications in the country. Last year, that's 2017, the Bank of China opened their first Serbian offices. So, in a way, we could say wow that's if that's if all of this is, is true then the things he's saying and and the idea of this silk road is really something that china is working on i i, I don't think it's bad i really i really appreciate it finally someone investing in the countries and actually fixing the shit that we're not able to f fix because you know i just now imagine this this like this chinese company building a railway road 
Well, on the left side of the little road, you can see like a Bosnian, Serbian and Croatian just having a fight with each other. No, my god is the real god. No, my god is the real god. No, only Orthodox, like about religion or something stupid like that. Or like, I don't know, with, like nationalism, like, no, nah, Serbia, we're the best, we're the greatest, blah, blah, blah. And then meanwhile, you're just trying to constructing everything through your country, doing everything. And then you're like, oh, oh, wait, how, how did this get here? Oh, oh, China, you say? Oh, oh, okay. That's probably how it's gonna end up. Say that the relationship between these two countries, well, it really couldn't be any better right now. But I can probably guess what you're thinking right now. I mean, very rarely at Visual Politics do we tell you that corruption is a friend of foreign investment. And when it comes to corruption, Serbia certainly starts to look less like a paradise. But make exactly. no mistake, Chinese companies are experts in dealing with this. In fact, Chinese businessmen are quite comfortable in hostile environments. They have demonstrated this when they built those textile factories in Ethiopia. And let's be honest here, China itself isn't exactly a haven of transparency and democracy either. Meanwhile, as soon as investment came to the Balkans, the region's fondness for Europe started going down. In 2012, 70% of Serbs wanted to join the European Union. Some people were even willing to change their alphabet to do that. As you probably know, Serbian is a Slavic language and it's- They're using the Cyrillic alphabet. I call it alien language. <laughs> it's written in Cyrillic characters. Some intellectuals wanted to change it to a Latin alphabet the same way the Croatians did. But now, well, this love of Europe, it's dropped to 35%. At the end of the day, with money flowing into China, well, who really wants Brussels funding? In past exactly. Exactly. And just because they are just... The European Union is not fond of the Balkan region and, and, and ex-Yugoslavia, even though before the war they offered us a uh, pact to join the European Union, like all the countries from ex-Yugoslavia. And now they're just like spitting on us and yeah, to people are not just don't like the european union especially like look at croatia croatia joined but a lot of croatians are not not liking the fact that they're that they joined the european union ever um and <laughs> instead of it actually making the country better it just gave it a free pass for all the young people to leave so just like in bosnia everybody just oh now we have a european passport bye everybody left Past presidential elections, none of the main candidates talked about joining the European Union. Nevertheless, nobody in Brussels seemed to be too worried about this. As we said, only China has been capable of finding business opportunities in this part of the world. The rest of Europe still sees this as a political and economic desert. The same happens in many parts of Africa where nobody dared to invest. All of a sudden, Beijing money came in, and now some of these countries are growing like there's no tomorrow. Exactly. I don't mind investments in the whole region from Chinese people if it means that all the people there can actually work the economics will grow they'll like re-establish life as it used to be and I don't mind if another country is the reason why it's happening even though they're gonna make profit of us that's only gonna last for an X amount of time until all the people are well educated, well, well like seated to say so and in their jobs and experience and education just rises across the region. Um, this this will have a great impact as well and, and they will of course take over those positions, start new companies, etc. So at one point they're not gonna be the only ones but it's in the beginning you have like a financial push from the Chinese which I think is really interesting. This whole video I think it's really really interesting video with a lot of evidence and things that I've, I've never noticed never saw on the news as well so what do you guys think of China investing in all the ex-Yugoslav countries and in, in the Balkans in general I really wonder what you guys his opinion is on this subject especially when you're from one of the ex-Yugoslav countries or from the Balkans I hope you guys liked this video if you did leave a like down below and I'll see you guys in the next video ciao perfect